Hey everyone, it's John with Roadco Incorporated. So I have a question for you. The question is, what is this? It's called a Command X Video Text Terminal. Try saying that five times in a row. But what does it do? It's just about the weirdest thing I've seen in a long time. Um, so let's dig into it and see if we can figure out exactly what's going on here. I found it about six months ago when I was doing my usual compulsive eBay browsing and I came across this listing. I had no idea what it was, some kind of obscure video game console maybe, and I was surprised to see how cheap it was and that it was unused and it had a wireless keyboard apparently and it's from Canada and a surprise button? What is that? I googled around and found basically nothing, but that didn't stop me because I'm definitely not above buying random stuff if it's interesting and odd. The price was decent, basically $100 US. I mean, it couldn't possibly be worth a whole lot less than that. And there were two, so of course I had to buy both. So here they are, extremely light units, and with this lovely faux wood paneling on the sides. And it's light because it apparently doesn't have much to it. Uh, it's some kind of terminal. It connects out through the phone cable, as you can see. It uh, plugs into the wall with a standard plug, which is good because Canada has the same power plug as the US. Uh, the keyboard certainly has some long dead battery inside it. So that's something that will need to be addressed. So looking at it, it started to remind me of Nabu. If you don't know the Nabu story, basically a guy in Canada warehoused a few thousand of an obscure retro computer from the 80s, brand new in box, and in late 2022, he started selling them off cheap on eBay for around $100 each. I got five of them. The idea of Nabu is that although it's got the guts of a computer, it acts as a terminal and you connect it to your TV cable system which serves as the network and the Nabu server infrastructure acts like a bulletin board with news and games and all sorts of other good stuff. Thanks to Adrian Black posting a video, the Nabu sold like crazy and a guy named DJ Schurz, a relative of the original inventor, started posting how-to videos and before long there was a rabid community around the Nabu. DJ Schurz set up servers for them to connect to and owners created a cable to adapt Nabu to the internet. My friend Steve made me one. Thanks Steve! So at this point, there's a thriving community of Nabu users who have access to everything that was originally available, and more, and people are even creating their own new hardware and software. There's even a chiptune music service you can connect to that lets it sit there all day and play thousands of chiptune songs. It's pretty cool. So yeah, to me the Command X looks like a Nabu competitor, but I couldn't find more information. I found these pictures of the box. It says it connects directly to TV and phone, electronic shopping and banking, up to the minute news and business, electronic mail, travel information. Definitely sounds Nabu-ish. So my friend Joel was over and we were messing with it and it's got composite and uh, RF out ports that both work at once. So when you turn it on, this is what it looks like. And strangely, it's black and white over composite and color on RF. Not sure why, but obviously this was mostly used at home on a TV. So it's good that uh, the RF signal is color at least. And uh, the cool thing about this over the Nabu is that you've got a wireless keyboard. So you can sit on the couch and you don't need that long cable that the Nabu comes with, which is nice. But uh, until we address the battery issue in the keyboard, uh, we're not going to get much further because right now the keyboard just does not work. Googling around more, I realized that video text is a generic term for devices that dial up and act like a terminal. Apparently that was fairly common, although not very successful. Sort of a proprietary BBS service with the hardware included. The article mentioned that the most popular video text unit was Minitel from Europe, which I happen to have two of, but I haven't done anything with, of course, although there's a community around those two, so maybe someday I'll get around to that. Okay, so tackling the keyboard issue. At first I was horrified of cracking it and, you know, breaking the thing, but then I realized that it's actually held together with Velcro. Look at that, four Velcro tabs. Kind of neat, actually. And then inside, here's the battery. 
It's a cluster of four Duracells. I thought they were kind of glued together, but it turns out it's Velcroed in and you can actually remove them from uh, this thing and replace them. Look at those 30 year old Duracells. They're, they're just so shiny compared to new ones. So I will do that. Here's the inside, not much going on. And then there are the instructions. All right, so I've replaced the batteries and here we go, second round. So we'll follow the instructions. First touch call, then touch, touch action. Hit the call button. Action dials the number, so we'll hit the action button. Dialing. <laughs> Obviously it has an internal modem. I'll have to try this phone number and see if it is still a real thing. I doubt it. Oop, so it reset. Obviously it couldn't get what it needed out of that phone number. Looks like the keyboard works. Here's the big moment though. We're gonna see what the surprise button does. Surprise button is letter B. That's disappointing. I was expecting more of the surprise button. Here's the guide. Not really that helpful. None of the keys do anything. Okay, so here we are on the inside. We can't use it any further, so we might as well break it open, right? Look at this bizarre plastic cylinder. It goes in here like this and then connects to the top part. Uh, I suppose it's there to keep it from getting crushed. And then here's the power supply, which is very clean, actually. It looks nice. I don't see anything oozing or causing problems. Well, after about 15 screws, I got the top shielding removed, and look at this. I take back what I said about it being flimsy and cheap. Underneath the plastic, this thing is a tank. Look at everything going on here. There's the RF box. Craziness. It has an Intel... 8088 processor, not the Z80 that I would have expect expected. And it looks like it's socketed too. And there's also this bus port for expansion. Who knows if they ever made anything that could connect to it. And here it says Center Tech 1983. So yeah, very impressive board. I'm, I'm still a little shocked how intricate it is. Maybe it is actually worthy of being a Naboo competitor. Here's the bottom of the case in case the label's of interest. So that's it, really. I just don't know much more. Uh, Wikipedia does tell us this, uh, that the Field Enterprises in Chicago launched Keyfax. Keyfax is the company around the Command X. So who knows what Field Enterprises is. It's hard to say whether this specific unit had its own dedicated service or if it was capable of being a more generic terminal that could dial up to other Videotech services. Needless to say, like the NABU, Command X was a failure, and also like the NABU, it seems to be popping up more and more. I've seen a couple dozen on eBay since I purchased mine. So who knows, maybe some crazy person has 3,000 in a warehouse in Canada, and once unleashed it will start a Command X revolution? Maybe there will be feuds between Command X people and Naboo people? Seems unlikely Command X will compare though due to reliance on a 300 baud modem, but who knows? Regardless, it's definitely a unique and fairly mysterious piece of computing history. If you know anything about the Command X, please post about it in the notes. It would be really great to increase awareness of this thing so collectors will look out for them. Many of the eBay sellers who have had them clearly didn't know what they were and they were selling them alongside old shirts and kitchenware. So if we can stir up interest, maybe we can keep some of them from being thrown out. Thanks for watching.